but that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzela K. This is Grizzly True Crime. Mic check. <laughs> I hope that you are well. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome mods, patrons, members and all existing subscribers. Today we're going to be discussing the case of Preston Lord. A very sad case and we're going to go over as many details as we can today to give you a really good case overview. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be more episodes because there's a 1000 162 page police report that came out recently and wow i'm only about a quarter of the way through of i've, I've like sped read it once but then after that working through it methodically getting all the facts so let's get a good case overview and then we'll work through that as we go okay okay you can hear me good 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 so here we go i've got a presentation for you i've got 911 calls to play for you we've got uh, clips and all sorts of things so Welcome. Okay. Now, let me fetch the presentation for you quickly. Here we go. Okay. So, deep breaths. Trigger warning. Of course, this content is for adults only. And it's very sad because it's involving a teenage victim who is only 16 years old. Preston Lord. And there's also teenagers who were arrested recently, right? So, a little bit about uh, Preston he was born on September 23rd of 2007 to his mother, Autumn, and his father, Nick. He has a sister, Tatum, and a stepmother, Melissa. He died on October 30th of 2023, just one month after he celebrated his 16th birthday. That just, that's very heartbreaking. He had just passed his driver's license test, and he, had, he was attending Combs High School, where he played basketball and golf, and they said he was an athlete. He played many sports, but he loved basketball and golf. He loved the color orange. So if you want to share some orange hearts in the chat here, uh, in honor of Preston and to show his family, you know, that we've got their back and we want to show them that this is a safe place for them to be, feel free to do so. His family said he stood up for the weaker person and knew the difference between right and wrong. And by the sounds of the people who were arrested, they did not, not at all. So we'll get into that now. Okay, so now we're going to October 28th of 2023, was that weekend right before Halloween, right? So everyone was partying and having Halloween parties all over the place. This case takes place in Arizona, in Queen Creek, Arizona is where these parties took place. All right, but I'm sure there were many parties all over the place, but this crime is taking place there. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for the orange hearts. So there were numerous Halloween parties happening that weekend, October 28th of 2023. The person on the right is Preston, okay? The party locations were shared amongst all these teens and young adults on Snapchat. Because, of course, there as well, the messages usually and images erase after 24 hours. Thankfully, the police were so quick to react to this and so thorough in the investigation and Snapchat worked with the police that they were able to obtain critical, very incriminating evidence against the teenagers responsible for Preston's death. So all these uh, party locations, they said they sent flyers, like we would imagine like handing out flyers, but apparently it was flyers, okay, digitally on Snapchat saying where all these different parties were going to be. Some of the witnesses, uh, from what I've read so far, went to at least four parties that night. But in this area, there were two, okay, two parties. Now, one of these parties had a stage and a DJ in a huge backyard. Apparently at that party... There was no alcohol provided, and the parents were present. They said there were about 200 people at this party, and many 911 calls were made to report about the behavior of the kids at this party. 
Now, the reason I'm saying that as well is because recently, along with this 1,162 page police report, which is very detailed um, and highly redacted, of course, because there's lots of minors involved here with teens uh, being there and everything, teen witnesses. So uh, the thing is that the, there was also 40 minutes, about 30, uh, between 34 and 40 minutes of 911 calls that were released. So you might have heard of those already if you have followed this case. But those I'm not going to play for you today because they were not actually at the location where Preston was murdered. That was 1.5 miles away. So it was like, you know, the same types of teens and they were bouncing from one house to the other and all of that. And they got bored at this party where apparently there was no alcohol. Uh, one of the witnesses said it was majority of Mormon kids that were like pretty sober. So I don't know. <laughs> Don't know what's happening there, but they just had a DJ a stage, but no alcohol, and the kids got bored there, and they went all over the place, right? Then they moved on to this next location, and Preston and his friends were already there. So they said that this other party was about 1.5 miles away. Now, if you did ever listen to those calls, maybe I could play some clips um, in another episode, because as I say, I, we could be here for, you know, forever. If I just mention every single thing, we'll be here for 12 hours. So it'll be a, <laughs> like a, sorry, sorry, my voice is going, it'll be like a full trial, right? <laughs> so the thing is, in those calls, what was happening was very concerned citizens were calling in and saying, hey, it's like 200 or 300 teens here. They're all intoxicated. Some of them are armed. Like, this is getting dangerous. Someone's going to get killed. And they said they were very confrontational, very aggressive. So, you know, that is part of it. It's part of the case. It's just not part of the location. So I'm going to look at this location today. So then, just to mention, they said that D-Money, some guy, we're going to get into who all these people are, right? D-Money ripped a chain off a kid in a Celtics jersey. Am I saying Celtics right or is it Celtics? And an argument ensued. And that was the catalyst to all of this. It wasn't the motive, but it was the catalyst. And when you hear who all these people are and what groups they belong to, allegedly, yeah, it doesn't take much to get them going, right? Welcome, Dr. Berry. It's so nice to see you here. Uh, Dr. Berry, psychologist response. If you've never checked out Dr. Berry's channel, go check it out. And thank you so much for being here. I was in your chat the other day. <laughs> so, okay. So just remember that, that that would be the, the spark, the catalyst, but definitely not the motive. Doesn't take much uh, motive for these guys. And it's just so sad when you actually hear the whole, when you see the big picture, which you will after today's episode. The group of bullies had all dressed up as mobsters for these Halloween parties. Like, wow, thank you so much, Timmy. Uh, Timmy Coates, aka Program Manager, Celtics. <laughs> not the Celtics, Celtics, thank you so much. Um, why would this group of alleged gang members literally dress up as mobsters for the party? Oh, my goodness, like, not very creative, very obvious. Ski masks, dressed all in black, trying to look as scary as possible, but it's already Halloween, you know? It's a Halloween party, so could they not? I don't know, I don't know. That's not important. I'm just like, what? They all dressed as mobsters? Like, okay. Uh, Healing Art says, group think can be terrifying. Absolutely. Now, on October 28th of 2024, at 9.07 p.m., 911 calls were made from concerned citizens about a large party in the area, 1.5 miles from where Preston was at a party. Officers then dispatched at 9.09 p.m., arriving at 9.20 p.m. So they were in the surrounding area. At 9.49 p.m., there was a 911 call from Preston's friend saying that he was lying unresponsive in the road. I'm going to play that for you, okay? Uh, let's just first understand the case. Thank you so much, Algoma1. So that 9.49 p.m. one was obviously from at the scene, the one, the house, you know, 1.5 miles away where it happened. Shame. And just brace yourself. It's very heartbreaking to hear that friend uh, call and he said he's really scared and his friend isn't breathing and all of that. At 9.55 p.m. the officers arrived on the scene. Police received additional calls during this time when they were already dispatched. Now what I found out later was that some of those calls were actually hoax 911 calls from 
some of the teens that were arrested from their group, which is even more sickening, that they, after beating Preston and leaving him unresponsive in the road, fled. You know, they all got in the cars and rode away and they're like, oh crap, oh crap, I think I hit him too hard and all of that. Then they started calling 911 and saying, hey, like my friend broke his wrist and, you know, trying to make up stuff and saying there's a whole team of lifeguards that's giving him CPR and all sorts of things. It's, it's actually very, this case is very heartbreaking and very infuriating. So, uh, thank you, Michaela, and everyone. I know mods will help me thank everyone so I can stay focused. I really appreciate it. I'll put your comments on the screen. Okay. So the police got there really quickly, even though they were already in the area. Thankfully, they didn't say, no, man, but we're already in the area. It's fine. They, they went straight there because this friend had said, my friend is lying unresponsive in the road. Preston was transported to the Chandler Regional Hospital, where he then died two days later, on October 30th of 2024. His autopsy was performed on October 31st at 9 a.m., which took about two hours. He had lacerations on the back of his head and hemorrhaging on the brain. That's all we know so far. I'm sure there were more injuries because they stomped, they stomped him to death. They stomped him, beat him, kicked him, kicked him, and all of that. On October 31st, after uh, police publicized a reward of up to $10,000 for information leading to an arrest in Preston's death, because, of course, they wanted all these partygoers to come forward. Reminds me almost of the Kylie Rodney case. Remember when they're like, come forward, teens. Tell us what happened. Show us any video. The FBI also got involved here. And then one of those suspects, who's now been arrested, texted one of the other ones and said, hey, my mom wants in on the 10K. So they were already strategizing who, who they're going to throw under the bus so that one of them can at least get the 10K. I mean... Isn't it just so sickening, right? Oh, 2023. Correct, correct. Thank you, Court Ness. Court Ness, there must always be at least one typo. That's true. It was October 2023. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, October 28th, 2020, uh, 2023. Now, starting on February 7th of this year, a grand jury uh, was convened and heard evidence about the course over the course of five weeks. That's a lot of evidence, you know. I think they saw a lot, of course, of what's in that report, all the text messages, um, the medical examiner's report and everything, which came out on February 15th, which they say that definitely helped them make a decision that, yes, uh, these suspects should be arrested and they should go to trial. Yes. So they said a grand jury was convened and heard evidence over the course of five weeks. My office has put in hundreds of hours as I have the members of several East Valley police departments. I offer my Deep thanks to the Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office for the difficult and important work that they have done. But let me emphasize, this investigation is not over. There's more information to review and the potential for additional charges exists, the district attorney said. On February 15th, Preston's death was officially ruled a homicide by a medical examiner. Thank goodness, because they could have said... You know, it was voluntary manslaughter or accidental or assault. They went with first degree murder. They said this was a homicide and then all these suspects were charged. All of them, seven have been arrested so far with first degree murder and kidnapping. Because under Arizona law, all one needs to prove kidnapping is that someone is restrained. There are 600 videos in evidence. They said 2,000 pieces of digital evidence and this 1,162-page police report that was released on March 28th. So, yes, angry vampire, we, we're going to hear that call just now. Uh, Preston's family said, we extend heartfelt gratitude to the community members who stepped up to provide information to secure these arrests. But for law enforcement's collective efforts and community members' invaluable cooperation, these arrests would not have happened. Each arrest represents a step towards accountability and justice for our son, uh, Preston. So, yes, I'm already aware of the typo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to quickly now, wait, I first have to do one more slide. Hold on. Then I'm going to show you a video clip. Okay. So, many of these teens allegedly belong to this group called the Gilbert Goons, which 
parents have been very concerned about for quite some time because for about two years they've already been escalating their violence. So they are described by concerned citizens as a gang of 20 or more mostly white upper middle class teenagers from multiple Southeast Valley high schools. The source for that is a Arizona Central. Attacks have been becoming increasingly violent. They are known as the Gilbert Goonies or Goonies and they've carried out random assaults on teenagers at house parties, in mall parking lots, outside fast food restaurants, at parks for the past two years. Records show that one victim ended up in hospital with a cracked skull. The group hits, kicks and beats their victims with brass knuckles. They target teens in the communities of Gilbert, Queen Creek, Santan Valley and Chandler. They post videos of their blitz-styled attacks on social media. They say Instagram and TikTok and they brag about it. So, a lot of um, the families believe that Preston's death was very much connected to the Gilbert goons and what they do. And it's very scary to think that if all these people, seven, have been arrested so far, there might be more arrests. If they had not been arrested and facing first-degree murder charges, imagine how many more lives they could have potentially taken and could still because it's a whole gang, allegedly. It's not quite a gang yet. Under Arizona law, they are now still investigating and deciding if it's going to be a gang, like labeled as an official gang. So on the right-hand side there, you can just see a little screenshot, but don't worry, I've got a video clip to show you. Um, again, trigger warning, because I'm going to show you how they behave, okay? Now, how do we have that video? There's a lady called Carly Heinmiller, whose daughter briefly dated a goon or goonie and was at the party where Preston Lord was killed. And she said that she compiled video and pictures from gang members' social media accounts and private messages. That's amazing that she did that, especially before everything gets deleted. That is a true crime mom, don't you think? She's like, see something, say something. Let's make a compilation and make sure we get all this evidence before it all gets deleted, right? Okay, so now I'm going to show you that clip quickly here. Let's just uh, resize it for you. Okay. Like this. Okay. So again, I say trigger warning. This could be upsetting because they're going to be beating people up. Just know it's not Preston Lord in this case. When we, what are we watching now is not them attacking Preston Lord. It's them attacking other teenagers who thankfully survived. Preston Lord did not. Okay. So now you've seen some examples of how they behave. I think it's extremely uh, concerning. And there's also a lot of drug uh, activity involved with this group. You know, so I don't know what state of mind they're in half the time when they're doing all these things, but it's very concerning. Very dangerous, right? Okay, now I'm going to play 
this 911 call that Preston Lord's friend made. Then we're going to continue with the presentation because I've still got lots to show you. Okay, I want to show you each of the suspects, the seven that were arrested, and start, you know, building the understanding of what happened here. Who are they? What started it? What happened? So that we can we can see. And then if there are more arrests, then hopefully we can just add to that to understand where do all these people fit in. Okay, so Preston's friend called 911 at 9.49 p.m. on October 28th of 2023. They were at a Halloween party in Queen Creek, Arizona. 911 emergency. Hey, uh, um, I'm, at a, I'm at a party. Um, and, uh, um, What's going there's on? Bunch Take people. a deep breath. There's a bunch of people out here with, with guns and shit, and they just jumped my friend, and he, he knocked out on the ground. Okay, are you um, I don't at, even know where. I, okay, you're in Queen Creek, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The, the cop, was the anyone, cop buddy came. Tried to, okay, you said there was guns. Was anyone threatened with the gun? No, nobody was threatened with the gun. I just know of people who had the gun. Okay. He's been out. He's been out, uh, unconscious for like two minutes. I, I, we need people over here. Okay, I'm getting them started. Okay, don't hang up. Just stay on the line with me. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> One of my friends broke his wrist. The other one knocked out on the ground. Okay. I'm scared. So there's one person that's unconscious and then another person with a broken wrist? Yeah, so there's some lifeguards here, so they're helping him out, getting him in a safe position so he doesn't he's, he's... Okay. All right, just stay on the line with me, Okay. They're on the way already. I'm just going to keep asking you some questions while they drive, okay? Yes, ma'am. Do you know the, the people that did this? Are they still there or have they left? I don't know if they left or they're still here. I got out of there as quick as possible, so I didn't get hurt. I don't know the people that are here. We don't have any beef with them or anything. Okay. Do you know if they, like, had a vehicle or were they just on foot? I, I don't know. And just okay. lay, lay, lay your wrist on your pants or something. I don't know what you want. I, I know. I know, dude. Let them know what that do there's I do for... medics on the way, okay? Okay. Is, are they bleeding at all? Uh, yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah. Okay. He, he's bleeding on his knee and he cracked his chin open and he's okay. Anywhere super, that super bleeding, pale. Just put pressure on them, okay? There is medics and police on the way, all right? Is there a gate that's needed to get into the neighborhood, do you know? No, there's no, there's not. No gate at all. Okay. Do no, we're doing any... CPR on him. Okay, there's CPR in progress on someone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know, um, did you see the, the people that assaulted them? Did you see them well enough to get any description, or did you not see it actually happen? Oh, they, all had, they all had ski masks on, and it was... How many was it? A, a lot. Like four or five or more? Like 15. Okay. Okay. Are people on the way? They're on the way, I, I promise. Need I need to get your fast. I did not want my fast. That's car. okay. They're going lights and sirens as fast as they can, okay? So me asking questions isn't slowing them down. We have lots of lots of units that are on the way. Okay. And you said you didn't know about any vehicles that they had? No, I didn't. Okay, and this was at a party at one of the houses right by where you are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's just around the corner. I'm on 194th Street. I don't okay. know. That's where I'm I don't know what you. That's uh, where you're mapping on, on my computer here. So I know where you are, okay? Yeah. Okay. Can I call my dad? Yes, call your dad. Oh, my phone's My phone's shattered. My God, dude. Are they still doing CPR on someone right now? I think so. Okay. So they, do we know if that person was breathing or not? He was breathing, and then I, I came over here because there's a bunch of people there uh -huh. telling me not to call the cops, but it's the safest thing to do. I'm scared. I don't okay. know what to do. Okay, you're you're doing the right thing. You're doing really good in giving me all the information that I need. Okay. Yeah. Did you? What was that? Mm -hmm. 
What? Is there something else going on right now? No, I'm just scared. Okay. Yeah, I understand. That is really scary. Um, was there any – did you see the guns, or did you just hear that they had guns? I, I heard that they had them. I did not see them. Okay. So it, it's secondhand, so I, I did not see that they had them. Okay. Man. <laughs> we need you over here. Hold on. I'm sorry. Don't tell it. Just tell it. Are you guys outside right now, or are you inside a house? I'm I'm outside. You're outside. Wait, okay. I don't know where we are. That's okay. We we have your address, and the officers are very close. Okay, they're gonna be there in about one minute. Yes, ma'am. What is yes, your name? Job. Okay. Yes, they're here. They're here. They're here. Okay, I'll go ahead and let you go so they can help you out. Okay. So as you can see, that part was redacted, of course, where he says his name. But yes, she did ask. The dispatcher did ask his name. We've just got about a minute and a half left. This is Preston Lord's friend that called 911 once all the the bullies, the suspects, had left. And there his friend was lying in the road on his back, unresponsive. So he called 911, and this is the call that we are listening to, okay? I can just hear the sirens. Can you stay on until okay. they can hear? Absolutely. You let, let me know when you see them, okay? Can I confirm yes, is your phone number here? Is it for... Yes, it is. Okay. I can hear them in the background there. Let me know when you see the cars. I got you. There's people pulled up behind me, so I'm getting in the truck. Okay. I don't know who they are. Now he's not waking up. No, I know. I'm, I'm on the phone with 911. I know, I know. He's fine. We're getting him. He has, he, has a, he has a pulse. He just got a pulse. Here, take your stuff. Take all the stuff. Oh, my God. Please, please, please. Are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. Did he say your friend has a pulse now? Yes. Okay, that's good. Do we see the officers? They're coming around the corner right now. I don't yet. Okay. Oh my God, dude. I'm so dead. Okay, do you? They're here? Yeah, they're here. Okay. Thank you so much. Good job. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. Shame. Okay, so that was the 911 call. Now we continue with our presentation. Let me just quickly take this away. Here we go. Okay. So we, we continue, right? Now, who are these suspects that have been arrested? There's seven that have been arrested and charged, all of them charged with first degree murder and kidnapping. Some charged with, uh, with theft. Okay, the robbery charge. Okay. So we've got Trist, uh, Tristan Billy. He was actually the last to be arrested. He apparently turned himself in. So he was number seven. I'm just putting him first so that we could try to understand like what happened here, right? So they say that he is known to fight. He allegedly stomped on Preston's head. He then was asking everyone to delete messages and videos because, you know, people take videos these days, of course, especially kids. They're like TikTok, Instagram, whatever. He was going around saying to everyone, delete that, delete that. And yes, he allegedly turned himself in on March 7th of 2024. Uh, this is just a little snippet from that 1,162 page report where they say, based on the above detailed information, it's believed that Tristan Billy, aged uh, 18 years of age, was involved in the physical assault against, they redacted that, the night of the 28th of October of 2023 at about 2149 hours. It's also believed that Tristan uh, was involved in the assault against by pushing him to the ground and punching him in the head and ultimately sustained superficial abrasions and a broken wrist on 10 28 2023 so there was someone that was pushed and 
apparently had a broken wrist. So that was true as well. Even though there's some reports of the group, the bullies, the suspects, calling in as well. They called 911 as well. But there was someone that that guy pushed as well. In fact, um, they've redacted a lot in the document, as I say. But they wrote down juvenile victim 1, 2, and 3. And then they've got these seven arrestees and many witnesses. So they said uh, a broken wrist on 10, 20, 20, 23, between 2145 and 2147. It's also believed that Tristan was involved in the assault against, redacted by punching him and pulling his chain from his neck between the same time. Okay, so, however, when you, <laughs> when you try to read the full narrative, because there's a lot of detail in here, right? They say that this guy, Dominic Turner, who's 20 years old, is known as D-Money. And it was, so these two are obviously friends, and it was this guy that actually was like running behind a kid and just grabbed his chain. He yanked his chain off his neck, right? And then he started running. So that's why he's got a robbery charge on top of the first degree murder and kidnapping. Now, apparently this guy got knocked out and that would have been part of the catalyst of, you know, everyone started running and it was wild. And unfortunately, Preston just happened to be in all of, in these teenage groups. You know, he wasn't part of these altercations. I did see on um, some, uh, on some mainstream reporting that they said that it was a girl's necklace that was pulled off and that Preston was trying to intervene to get the necklace back. But I don't read that yet from the report. As I say, it's going to take me a while to work through all of it and we will go through all of it layer by layer as we go. But they definitely said from everything I've read so far that it was a male that they'd pulled this chain off. And that started fights and people just running, right? Running through the street. And you know, as I said, with these um, Gilbert Goonies, it doesn't take much for them to then suddenly do these like blitz attacks. If someone falls or if they just stumble on someone and they think, oh, they look a little bit funny or whatever it is, then they attack them. So that sounds like what happened here. If there's any more details to share, I will. But yes, okay, then, oh, this guy. Now we've got Talon Renner. He's 17 years old. High school football star, I should say former high school football star, because now he's in jail, ruined his whole career, but he's got very wealthy parents, so I really hope he doesn't, uh, you know, he's got the top attorneys and that he doesn't get off easy. Do you know what I mean? Like with a plea deal or something. Who knows? Now, he's a big bragger, okay, so buckle up. High school football star, achieved rankings in Division 5A and 5A Northeast Valley for specific statistics. He allegedly through the first punch. Now, this is based on all these Snapchat messages going between all these kids, right? And young adults. They're sending messages to each other and the police were able to obtain those from Snapchat very quickly. Because normally, messages would disappear after 24 hours. But the police conducted this investigation and were able to get that evidence and they were able to see lots of messages between all of these uh, suspects and them talking about who threw the first punch, who did what. So... When they say he allegedly threw the first punch, like at, they mean at Preston, right? He he sent a Snapchat to a friend saying that he was in a large fight, killed a kid, didn't know his own strength. He said, I might have hospitalized a kid. I hit him pretty hard. He said, oh, I put this kid on life support. But he's saying it in a braggy way. Okay, so just... If you feel snarky, there's a lot of reason to. All right. Now, if you saw the other two pictures, those were mugshots. We don't have a mugshot for this guy because he is 17 and he is actually in juvenile detention right now. So they don't have, they don't release his mugshot. Hello to Joe Jackalone. Welcome. This, this bragging really, it really gets me when he's like, oh, I put this kid on life support. He said, I got in a fight, a big group fight, I accidentally killed a kid. I guess I'm just too strong. Uh, Talon was allowed to play a football game on November 17th, which got the head football coach, Randy Reisdorf, fired in January of 2024. 
So obviously, he was pretty good at football because the school and the football coach was like, no, 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 he's still got to play, okay? Even though we didn't know he was a suspect at the time. But, oh, but they did. The police were like, no, you did. <laughs> because they went and got his DNA with a buckle swab. They had a search warrant to check his devices and things. They knew he was under investigation. They knew he wasn't at school for a week when he was supposed to be because his parents pulled him out. We're going to get to that now. But uh, yeah, they still let him play football and be the, what's the title now? Like the player of the day, or it was called the player of the game. He won some award for that. He was shining, you know, like woohoo, football, loving his life, carrying on as if nothing happened. Isn't that terrible? So yes, now the, um, the head football coach got fired as well. Police had served a search warrant on talents and uh, devices and got his DNA which the school was aware of, and he bragged that Preston's funeral would have to be a closed casket funeral because of all the injuries that Preston endured, which means all the injuries that he allegedly inflicted. Can you believe it? So Talon had minor discoloration to his right and left hands on the knuckles and a small cut on his left hand near his wrist area. Okay, so keep that in mind because... Check this out. We're getting to it. His parents pulled him out of school early on October 31st. He returned on November 6th. And in, during that time, they moved him to the $850,000 family cabin three hours away so that he, his injuries could heal. So that he's not such a uh, red flag, such a suspect, right? Just go out there three hours away. Take the dog along. Dog's name was Gucci. He actually had sent a picture to someone and they said, wow, his jaw looks swollen. And they saw him with the dog. But yeah, he was out there at the family cabin, just chilling while healing. It was Talon's dad's ex-girlfriend, Ashley Reynolds, who told police about this because she observed zero remorse for Preston's death. She described Talon as a fighter, an angry kid, and someone who holds a lot of aggression. She also told the police that Talon's dad had backdated his electronic calendar to make it look like Talon had left on October 28th. He was arrested on March 6th. Now, they say he allegedly turned himself in. This is a picture of him playing football, which enraged, obviously, all the other parents because they knew. By then, the parents had also formed like groups, uh, group chats and things, and they were all also gathering evidence because they didn't get much at that stage, of course, from the police. So they're all very worried and they heard all these names going around, Talon and Preston and, you know, all these ones, D-Money. So, yeah, where they were like, you can't have our teens like playing football with this guy, an alleged killer. And on the right hand side, you can see that that is when the police were going to um, arrest him. But apparently no one was home when later he turned himself in. Which I worry about, based on him having good lawyers and them advising him to do so. <laughs> right? So, side note. It's a bit of a sidebar now. <laughs> Talon's dad, Travis Renner, and this is Talon's brother, who is also in jail. He's also one of these Gilbert goons. And he's been arrested for charges related to his goon activities. So... Talon's dad, Travis Rayner, that guy, he is a millionaire gym owner. His other son, Kyler, is also in jail for Gilbert Goon's related crimes. Travis, the dad, allegedly tried to hide evidence of the night, shifting blame on Talon. So he said, no, 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 it's not his son. It's this other guy, uh, Tylen or Talon. You know, they just say it a little bit differently. It's that guy. They're just confusing the names. Already trying to pin it on someone else. He got... Uh, Talon a lawyer, he signed a lawyer immediately and would not allow him to speak to detectives without him and the lawyer present. He made his, his employees sign a non-disclosure agreement about the incident. It's a little bit weird, okay? It's like everybody's just like, listen, I'm going to help my boy out here. Just everybody sign a non-disclosure agreement. Like, what is going on here? Does it remind you a little bit of Alec Murda, right, with Mallory... Beach's death and how Alec Murdoch behaved there. I don't know. That comes to mind a little bit. Okay. Um, so someone's saying how old is the brother. I actually don't know his exact age. I don't actually know. If you know, let me know. 
So they said, I was just like shocked, my word. So the dad's trying to do what? And the brother's in jail already? And what is going on here? Wow. Okay. So, and the dad could also end up in jail based on what he did here. They haven't officially charged him yet, but he could face charges. The investigators have already, the police chief said they've submitted charges to the district attorney already. So let's see if they're going to cuff the dad. They said, um, Travis, the dad, bragged about buying his kids out of trouble before. And so then the school were to put forward a statement saying, no, 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 we never got money from him. No, no, he's never done that. He says he gave $10,000 at a time. I don't know, to get his kids out of trouble before. Now, he and his business partner plotted to let Talon stay in a cabin in show low. Is that what I said? It looks like show low. <laughs> Until his injuries healed, which was three hours away. And he did go there. Detectives recorded that Renner's family had financial means to aid in fleeing to Mexico. Oh, thank you. Dizzy, welcome. Uh, Dizzy helped me get the document as well. So welcome. Thank you so much. And you said the brother's 22. Thank you very much. Okay, so they were worried that the parents were going to help him completely flee if they realized he's actually going to be charged with first degree murder. And then police had to... Oh my word, this one. <laughs> police had to formally apologize after Talon's parents, Becky and Travis Rayner, received special valet parking services from the Maripoca County, um, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office cops. So after his appearance in court, they literally escorted the parents at the side door and brought their Tesla to them. <laughs> what? So people were very upset with that, of course. And I do worry about that. You know, I worry about the influence that this wealthy family has, I don't know, on the police or if they have friends in the police. I don't know. So far, the police chief seems great and very invested in the case. And he wants full justice for Preston Lord. I'm just like, is this, is this dad going to be arrested or what? Okay, welcome, Rolfi and Harley. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. So now here's the other guy who he was trying to pin it on. Talon Vigil. He's 17. He So this mugshot they released even though he's 17, but they say they also look at previous charges and I don't know, they go through a lot of reasons of when they can release and when they can't. He admitted to someone that he punched a kid out cold. He was arrested on March 6th, and so it's not long ago that these were all arrested. And he said, I hit a kid, and this kid hit his head, and then they kicked his head in the ground, and then I got word he died. So I don't know. Like IDK, so I don't know. It should. This is another little snippet from the um, report. It should be noted that Redacted mentioned that the boys involved in the fight with are part of a group called the Gilbert Goons and that they are all known to fight. She stated that she knows Mason, Treston, Owen Hines are all associated with the Gilbert Goons. It's believed to be the Snapchat of Talon Vigil, where he commented the following in a private Snapchat message, and it's that quote I just read. As of the 31st of October 2023, law enforcement continue to receive media evidence related to the Snapchat conversations between redacted and other unknown accounts about the incident to include the following. The kid in the white suit kicked the kid's head in. Here, hold on, uh, Talon Renner is the kid that knocked him out before the kid in the white suit kicked him. The usernames redacted is communicating with are not visible. Okay. Uh, Joe Jackalone says, filing charges. Sounds like the cops did their jobs. It's the rest of the criminal justice system that you need to worry about in this case. Yeah, I think I think so far what I can see, yeah, everybody is doing their job really well. We just gotta gotta keep an eye on it. We don't want these people to get off easy, right? If they're all involved. Of course they're innocent or proven guilty. It just sounds like they have six hundred videos as evidence and two thousand pieces of digital evidence. Now there's also William Hines, eighteen years old. He has a criminal record for committing several assaults, including running someone over with his car. He has three pending aggravated assault cases, including a DUI, um, DUI aggravated assault case. He wrote in some of his messages, straight up, bro, I was drunk, heat of the moment. I kicked him one time and I kicked his leg. Arrested on March 6th for Preston's murder. And then we've got Jacob 
Ryan Me- Meisner, Meisner, 17. He also doesn't have a mugshot. So it's him and the bragger, Talon Renner, even though they all kind of brag, but that Talon Renner takes it to the next level that don't have mugshots. Jacob Ryan Meisner, 17. He was arrested March 7th. And in these uh, messages that I've just screenshotted here for you, they say conversation with redacted based on phone number is Jacob Meisner. So sometimes they call him Jake. His name is Jacob Ryan Meisner. So I got a little confused there for a bit because I'm like, is it Jacob? Is it Jake? Is it Ryan? Which one are they referring to here? Because they kind of interchange it here and then I'm like, what? So on the 31st of October 23, posts regarding the person's case are shared. They said, delete everything. Vids, text, pics in costumes. They're either getting Talon or Treston. How do you know? People are posting Treston. I feel so bad for Talon and Tresty. OMG, I feel terrible. I didn't even know Tresty did that. If I get posted, I'm blowing my head off. Okay. Not kidding. I didn't even hit that kid once. Only the beaner. We have to find these kids again. The ones that started it. We can't let the homies go away. Bro, I just heard kids talking about it in my class saying it was Talon, saying it's a, a different one or some ish. Sure. Okay. And we've got more. <laughs> We're going through them all. More arrests. So then there was Taylor Sherman. Okay. 19. That's a Snapchat logo, logo in the corner there. Okay. So this is now from page 81 of the report. It's just reminding myself in case I wanted to go down that rabbit hole with you. Like, let's look at all of it. But we're just going to have to, you know, look at bits at a time because there's so much information there. So they said this message is a video of Redacted being dragged out of the roadway by the Awataki kids? Awataki kids? I think that Redacted word would be Preston. He said, holy F who hit him? D money. Jake. Talon and me. How did they hit D money? We was looking at them weird. I don't know. WTF. I'm just abbreviating, right? I'm glad it wasn't you. Is he okay? Is he talking? I knocked out his homie. He's okay. As you should. Like he's talking normally? Yeah, he geeking. He wants to go kill them. Holy. He was literally dead on the floor. D money but shoot at randoms, bruh. MFs like mofos, right? So mad. Holy F, why is your location on for? A video is sent. These, N-word, not playing. You went back? I actually think that kid is actually dead. There was a blanket over him, I heard. You killed someone? I didn't. Talon did. You didn't hit him? I didn't hit that kid. What if it's the kid you hit? I know the kid I fought, he never hit me. Why did Talon hit him? They was talking-ish, I guess. Was that kid? Clay told me it's an investigation now. So, sure, this guy also got thrown in there with all these, because there's more text messages, of course. I'm just giving you a little preview, which incriminate all of them. So, they said there was a male on the ground. The smaller group got sucker punched, and then that group runs off. Uh, Said the victim got knocked out cold. The kids began recording and humping the individual on the ground. They said he heard, damn, he's knocked out. Told Officer Coda the subject, humping, was part of the aggravators. As if they didn't already do enough. They also had to dry hump him and dance on his body. Witnesses say that 10 to 15 people stood over him, kicking and punching him. One boy danced on his body as others dry humped him, further degrading the victim as he lay unconscious in the road. The chain that started it all, you know, the catalyst, the chain that was snatched off of one kid's neck was worth $10. Only the pendant was recovered. And it doesn't matter how it's worth, how much it's worth. $10, all of this? You know, I don't know what he was trying to snatch it for. <laughs> Somebody lost their life. Preston Lord lost his life. His was only... 16 years old and just turned 16. My goodness. All seven suspects have been charged with first degree murder and kidnapping and will be tried as adults. Okay. If you want to like and share, you can use the hashtag justice for Preston Lord. That's what his family's using. I've made it in orange because apparently his favorite color was orange. 
So if you look at the official Facebook page, which I'll show you as well, um, that his family has made, it's orange candles and orange t-shirts and orange everywhere. So a screenshot of a conversation with Redacted, they write, yo, tell me you didn't delete the video of the dead kid. It's 10K if you give it to the Popo. Meaning, hey, hand that in, throw someone under the bus, and then you can get the reward money. It is believed based on... Oh, so Taylor writes, huh? That's going to make me a victim, you stupid F. It is believed based on the context that Taylor could have meant suspect instead of victim. Snapchat, where based on description, Jacob, Meisner, Talon, Rayner, and Dominic Turner are walking down the street. Sherman is heard saying, oh, F. An initial trial date is scheduled for November. We'll keep an eye on that because that might change, as we know. There might be more arrests. We just don't know. I mean, they've arrested seven, and I believe they were, in the whole document, at least 11 names out there, and who knows if the dad will get arrested. And remember, with the Gilbert uh, Goonies, there's other arrests that have already been made previously and now that's got to do with literally what they're doing. It's not these seven people. I don't even know if they were involved in that, but I'm sure they're going to make a lot more arrests. They'll probably figure out who exactly belongs to that group it sounds to me like a gang <laughs> right and um so i wonder how many more arrests there will be will there be more arrests do they have dna evidence they do have dna evidence because not only were many people involved in preston's death but they got buckle swabs clothing samples they were actually when they went to the one guy's house at uh, Talon. He was wearing the same clothes that he wore the night before. So they're like, hey, we need to take your clothes. Thank you. And the chain you got there and your phone. So they've got devices. They've got um, clothing. They've got buckle swabs from them and everything. Uh, will the Goonies be identified as a gang under Arizona law? I wonder. I hope so. Because it seems like they are very, very dangerous. You can share hashtag justice for Preston Lord. It's unbelievable, right? Okay, so now I want to show you a few more things. Let's quickly go over here. And I just want to show you the map. Okay, just to show you what the area generally looks like. So they were talking about, they talk in the document about this street and how they were all running. Um, let me just go out like this. Yes, okay, we're facing north. So 194th Street and East Via del Rancho Road. Uh, the police chief also said that they're going to, well, they have already submitted charges for the homeowners where the parties occurred, especially the, the homeowners where Preston was. So that's interesting as well. Uh, Rolfi said, so sad and very disturbing. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Woody Deason said, no doubt. There'll be some flipping going on here. Can you imagine how they're all going to throw each other, each other under the bus here? You know? Um, one of the defense attorneys I watched comment on this case said it's going to all be about confusion, about, no, no, what exactly caused Preston's death? Was it that kick, that punch, that, you know what I mean? That's what the defense attorneys will be doing to prove, like, who is. But luckily they've charged them all with first-degree murder. Okay, so we are in um, Arizona. I just want to zoom out so we could see a little bit. Wait, let's go like this. Here's, here's Gilbert Chandler. Maybe I should zoom in a bit more. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> a little bit of map time. Chandler, Chandler Heights, just so you can see where we are. Here's Phoenix. We know Phoenix, right? Especially no matter where you're from, wherever in the world, Phoenix, Arizona. We know that one. <laughs> okay, so we, we're going. Uh, here's Tempe. And we zoom in here. And it was in this area, Queen Creek. And they say it was on this street, South uh, 194th Street and East Via del Rancho Road. And you can see this is a cul-de-sac. So I think the party was on this, this road. And it's as if the kids, they were all running northward on this road. So I'm actually not sure if the party was here, but they talk about this road and this one. So they were all running this way. And Preston was somewhere here. You know, just with a bunch of friends. Apparently, you know the D-Money guy that snatched the necklace? 
the guy that he snatched the necklace from was one of Preston's friends. So maybe they were all just running, you know? And I think they would obviously know about the reputation of these Gilbert goonies. Yeah, I would run too. So it's just very sad because from everything I've read so far, and we never victim blame either way, there's absolutely nothing that Preston did here to deserve any of this. But it really is, they said the suspects didn't even know Preston. They never met him. They don't know him. And it was just like running and then starting to attack someone. It's it's quite random. Even though he is part of the group of the guy whose necklace got snatched, which is also not his fault. Someone just decided, ah, I'm going to run behind him and snatch his necklace. Like, what? So yes, that's where that is. And then I want to show you this little clip from the police. This is from the Queen Creek, Arizona police. So let me just bring it over. It's quite interesting because they just they were just explaining, which will help us for future episode, episodes if we do listen to the other 911 calls or things like that. They were just explaining which call was made when and what happened. Okay. In an effort to be fully transparent, in recent records released, the Queen Creek Police Department released a series of audio files that included 911 calls and also non-emergency calls that came into the call center during and around the time of the attack. These audio files included a time period between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. on October 28, 2023. As you look at this graphic, we'll start at the top where it says Queen Creek Ranchettes before the attack. The initial call, and let me be very clear, is we received one call for service, as I've said from the beginning, one call for service prior to the attack in the neighborhood of the Queen Creek Ranchettes. That call came in at 9.06 p.m. and then was the officers were later dispatched at 9.09 .09 p.m. and 37 seconds and arrived at 9.20 p.m. and three seconds. There was a second call that was received by the communication center at 9.12 p.m., but was not dispatched because officers were already en route to the area. As you move down the graphic to the bottom, this is the part where we wanted to be fully transparent about everything that was going on in that particular area related to parties between 9 and 10 p.m., also because this particular location and set of calls has been repeatedly confused with the situation that occurred in the Queen Creek Ranchettes and related to the Preston Lord attack. As you move down the graphic to the Via de Arbolas area, this is another party that occurred about a mile to mile and a half away, but was not directly related to the attack. On the Via de Arbolas call for service or series of calls, we first arrived in the area at 8.34 p.m. after an, a call that came in at 8.24 p.m. on the non-emergency line. Subsequent to that, while the officers were on scene, we received seven additional calls, including two 911 and five non-emergency calls. These calls for service, those seven audio files that were released with this records release, were not related to the attack involving Preston Lord and were not in the area of the Queen Creek Ranchettes. They are continually being confused and that's why we are providing them in this context. As you move back up to the center of the graphic, this is when we received the subsequent call in the Queen Creek Ranchettes where Preston was attacked. The initial call that came in after the one and only call that we received in that area came in at 9.49 p.m. to the call center. The officers were dispatched at 9.51 and 17 seconds and then arrived at 9.55 and 29 seconds with a three minute and 33 second response time. We received multiple 911 calls for service, five are listed there on the graphic. And again, we arrived at 9.55 p.m. I'm so proud of the tenacity and dedication of the QCPD team. I'm also proud of the hundreds of people who have come forward to help us with tips and other information. I want to reiterate that the Queen Creek Police Department and the town of Queen Creek is committed to the safety of this community, and we will continue to be part of the solution, especially for our youth. We have an amazing community that continues to come together when it matters, and together we can create and enhance a culture of unity that condemns violence. Thank you for your time today. Okay, so that's the police chief. And speaking of which, they've still got this 
FBI link. I'll link all of this in the description box for you. So that you, if you want to visit any of these um, articles or videos that we're watching or, you know, this link here, if you know anything or if you have teens in the area that might have still evidence on their phone or something, if they were at the party, if you know someone who was there, uh, they say seeking videos and photos related to the Queen Creek, Arizona assault of Preston Lord. FBI Phoenix and the Queen Creek, Arizona Police Department are seeking videos, photos or other media from near the site of the assault of 16-year-old Preston Lord that took place on October 28th of 2023. So you can fill in here, first name, last name, everything, and uh, submit if you have anything or if you know anyone who has anything, right? Uh, ASU mom says, please look into the Gilbert Goon attacks before Preston's death. It's a it is horrifying. I did look into it. I just can't fit it all into one episode, but it is horrifying. There's actually a lot of attacks on teens and all sorts of things going on there. So they really do need to, uh, I don't know, probably arrest them all at this point, right? <laughs> you said Preston's death could have been prevented if GPD took all the goon attacks seriously. Hashtag justice for Preston. And I know that families have been, um, after Preston's murder, they've been doing marches to make sure they keep the pressure on so that the police can really address that alleged gang, right? Okay, so here is a website called Justice for PrestonLord.com that his uh, family has made and there's a lot of information and resources here especially if you want to look at events if you are in the area they said the fight for justice let me just move it over for you this website is dedicated to the mission and purpose of finding uh, hashtag justice for Preston Lord it'll be a source of information for events activities fundraising efforts and other endeavors to bring awareness to the issue of teen violence Thanks to everyone who supports the Lord family and the fight for justice in every teen violence case. We appreciate you more than words could ever express. Liz says, I, near, I live near, near the area in Mesa, Arizona, and lived in Gilbert, Arizona prior. Thank you for covering this crime. Thank you for being here. So here they've got a special fundraising event, which they say is happening on, it's quarters for a cause on April 17th. So I'm sure they'll update this as they go because they've had quite a few events, right? Quarters for a Cause will be a fun event held on April 17th to honor Preston and support the Lord family. Attend with friends, family members, business colleagues, or even complete strangers. We're also looking for businesses and individuals who want to sponsor the event, sponsor a table, and or donate to a prize for our raffle. And you can see lots of photos here and all the orange because Preston loved the color orange. Shame. So I will link this for you as well. Okay. And then I wanted to um, just tell you a little bit about Preston. You guys know I like to do this. I like to read the obituary so we can learn a little bit more, you know, about the victim. Like who are they? What were their favorite things? So I hope you don't mind. Just give me a few minutes here. Okay. So Preston William Lord, September 23rd, 2007 to October 30th of 2023. This is every parent's worst nightmare. 16 years old. Murdered. Brutally. And it's so scary because it's like a Halloween party so everyone's all dressed up and they've got masks on and, you know, all wild, intoxicated, doing their thing and just attacking this poor boy. Quite randomly. Preston William Lord, 16, kind, loving, funny, intelligent, and extremely, and an extremely thoughtful young man. Preston passed suddenly on October 30th of 2023, one month after his 16th birthday with his sister Tatum, mother Autumn, father Nick, and stepmother Melissa by his side. Because he was in hospital, remember? Preston recently celebrated his 16th birthday on his uh, junior homecoming day and had a wonderful time with friends. He was proud and happy passing his driver's license test and getting out on the road. He was finding his independence and loving his newfound freedom. He was a member of the Combs High School basketball team and golf team. He, sorry, my voice is going. <clears throat> Focus. He played for many years on youth football and soccer leagues and always continued to work hard, developing his skills to be a well-rounded athlete. He loved his family, friends, hooping, uh, gaming, theme parks, Marvel, M&Ms, the beach, the color orange, cool fall days, holidays, pizza, and burgers, and recently discovered a joy for golf. 
Preston was known for his unwavering love for the Seahawks and Celtics and loved bantering about his teams with family and friends. He loved and appreciated going to packed stadiums and watching his favorite teams surrounded by fellow fans, just as equally as being home watching games on Sundays with mom or dad. His numeracy skills landed him the role of statistician for he and his friends' fantasy football league. Preston was content with what he had. Unless he had his eye on a new pair of Jordans or a game that he wanted, he preferred to save his money. He'd always help um, or cover the cost of things that people didn't have enough. Preston was loyal, trustworthy, and responsible. He had empathy for children and was gentle and kind. He stood up for the weaker person and knew the difference between right and wrong. He inspired many people to do better, to be better, and to do better. Although he had many friendships, there was no one he looked up to and admired more than his big sissy. Preston was very academic and has received many scholastic honors. Most recently, his sophomore academic letter and pin. Additionally, he participated in various school leadership roles, including vice president of National Junior Honor Society, president of his elementary student council, as well as sophomore class historian. Preston was also awarded the 2023 President's Education Award from the U.S. Secretary of Education. Preston is survived by his mother, Autumn Lord, his father, Nicholas Lord, his sister, Tatum Lord, his stepmother, Melissa uh, Siconte, Siconte, his grandparents, Tony and Luann Reich and Edward Lord, W. Lord, his great-grandfather, Edward F. Lord, his uncle and his aunt, Sean and Rena Curiel, their children, his uncle and aunt, Nathan Melissa Lord, and their children. I won't say the children's names right now. Oh my goodness. So isn't that just, it's just very heartbreaking. Here's a Facebook group. It's called Justice for Preston Lord. If you've never seen it, do check it out. Um, you can follow them there. Marsha said this is the second deadly attack by teens in two weeks. The Apple River trial shows exactly what teens are turning into. Although that was a little different, but I get what you mean with the, I don't know, the group like mentality, right? Shaman. Okay, so here's the official Facebook group. If I go here, I just want to show you something. If you go to videos, oh, this one. Um, I don't know if there's music. I just want to see. This was one month before he was murdered. I don't know where the sign went. Hold on. Happy birthday to you. Oh, shame, man. So you can find videos um, that they posted here of, of Preston. Uh, now I just want to show you a few clips. So let's look at this one. If there's going to be more arrests. And then we'll, there's a couple of clips and then we'll call it a day for now. And then we'll look at some more as we go along. Okay. We did submit charges on the homeowners. Queen Creek Police Chief Randy Bryce confirming his department has submitted charges against the owners of the home where an October Halloween party was held. The party 16 year old Preston Lord and his alleged killers attended shortly before the attack. Can you tell us what charges you submitted? Uh, no, we're not, no, we're not going to disclose that until they're done with their review. It's the first time we're hearing from the chiefs. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to slow it down a little bit, man. What is it doing? Um, I want to just set, I've got the speed at 1.25 because you guys know I listen to things fast. So <laughs> just trying to change it quickly here. Let's see if we can change it. Thank you. Okay, let's try to go to normal. That'll be good. <laughs> since the release of his department's 1,200-page police report detailing their investigation into Lord's death. Tips revealed in the report alleging one of the seven suspects, Talon Renner, was pulled out of school the day after Lord died from his injuries and taken out of the valley by his parents so his hands could heal. Is that hindering your investigation, and is that against the law? You have to remember, we have to look at, was there some criminal aspect to it? So we're investigating. If we find something that's criminal, we will send the, that information to the county attorney for charge. 
charges. The chief not commenting on the role each of the seven suspects allegedly played in the group style assault, but noting the case continued to develop after they recommended charges to the county attorney's office back in December. The report showing police initially considered second degree murder charges for some of the suspects and aggravated assault for others. But by the time charges were formally announced, they had been upgraded to first degree murder for all seven suspects. As we refine the case and the details kept on coming in, we worked with the county attorney to refine what we would actually be charging. That's part of the review process. And I think we've come up and they've come up with the, the best um, case scenario for what should be charged in this. I just wanted to ask how your department is doing mentally after living this for the past several months. I appreciate that. I think one of the things that are lost, especially when we had that frenzy of why is this done and all the criticism that came along with that is not only are the officers and the support staff and all the people that are in conjunction with this, you'd be surprised how much this has touched the entire department. It was overwhelming just for that. Then on top of that, all the other, you know, scrutiny because of, you know, the different feelings that were out there about how we were conducting business. So it's been tough. I, I, I will not uh, sugarcoat it. It seemed like it was all consuming from the moment that you guys arrived on scene that night. It was, and I. this is where I've said it, and, and I, I want to say it again, is that I am so proud of my staff. Um, I get a little choked up when I think about the, the time and energy that they sacrificed to get this job done. And they, they are great human beings that just want to make a difference. And so I, I, I want people to know that and understand how, how much these people care about what's happening. In all of that, we still had a regular police department to run. And the chief noted they have a robust mental health and support system for his officers. But guys, it's just hard to imagine how taxing this has been on investigators who are members of the East Valley community. Well, yes, but we worry about the family, right? We worry about the family. Okay, hold on one second. I want to get another clip here for you. Okay, let's just <laughs> check the speed. No, no, you see, that's not going to work for us. <laughs> okay, there we go. Family and supporters of Preston Lord, the East Valley teen whose beating death shocked the community in the courtroom as some of the suspects appear before a judge. ABC 15's Ashley Holden was inside and outside the courtroom talking to families from the East Valley and two of the teen suspects attorneys. Five of the seven suspects led into court Wednesday to face a judge with their attorneys. Talon Renner. Jacob Ryan Meisner. Despite Talon Renner and Jacob Meisner, both 17, being housed in juvenile detention, all the suspects arrested are being charged as adults. All seven indicted for first-degree murder and kidnapping in the beating death of 16-year-old Preston Lord. We would waive reading and enter a not guilty plea. Each of the suspects pleading not guilty, not appearing in court, suspect William Owen Hines. Mr. Hines, uh refuse transportation uh, to appear. His attorneys asking for the judge to waive his presence, entering a not guilty plea on his behalf. Inside the courtroom, members of Preston Lord's family and the East Valley community that has rallied around them. It became very real, I think, for all of us when the arrests happened. Um, and, and so it, it's another chapter of grief for all of us. I think we're nervous, sad. Um, it's nice. Can you imagine, I'm so sorry to pause right there, can you imagine how angry all the parents are, the families that have been highlighting the risk of this group for so long with the police, calling it in, calling it in, because for two years they say that these Gilbert Goonies have been attacking teenagers and bragging about it on social media. So they do post about it on Instagram and TikTok and you know, it just got worse and worse and worse. And they said, you know, at some point somebody's going to get killed and it's very sad that people have lost their lives and parents were calling the police and warning them. So I, I see this uh, quite a few locals here and you guys are not impressed, <laughs> right? That they didn't take any of those warnings or the concerning calls seriously or, you know, shame. It's terrible. Uh, ASU mom said Preston's parents requested a police escort at Preston's funeral because Preston's murders were still in the community. Police declined. Oh my goodness. But Talon's parents got valet service? After Talon's arraignment? Yeah. Yeah, make that make sense. Thank you, ASU mom. That's terrible. Yeah, for me, that's that's a concern. That's a bit of a red flag. If the police are like, don't worry, sir, we will bring your Tesla to you for one of the suspect's parents, the millionaire gym owner. Worry about that. I worry about that. They better not. Okay.
nice to see that the wheels of justice definitely to start to turn. Hugs were exchanged after marking the beginning of the long road ahead. We don't have any comment at this time. Okay. ABC 15 was able to talk to Meisner's attorney and the lawyer representing Renner, asking about allegations in new court documents. Any comment on the allegations that Tell was taken out of the area after the town? The internet is full of misinformation. That's from court. <laughs> the internet is full of misinformation. Oh, okay. Documents. Renner's dad, nor attorney, responding to any other questions. Also tonight, you may remember this happening at Renner's first there appearance. There we go. There, we're going to see the Tesla moment. In juvenile court last week, ABC 15 watched as a Maricopa County deputy pulled Renner's car around the Renner's family car to a secured lot, avoiding our reporter. Now the county's presiding judge is saying this is inconsistent with security protocol. They're what the hell were they thinking? Don't worry, sir. We'll escort you at the side door so you don't have to deal with these reporters, okay? What? <laughs> uh, Peter Pranzo, oh man, your comment just flew by. I want to read it. <laughs> there we go. You said parents so involved in their own personal lives can sometimes neglect their most precious asset, their young sons and daughters. Yeah. Okay, so let me just quickly fetch another one for you. We've got, I think, two more clips to look at. Hold on one second. Let me just check the speed of this one as well. That's normal speed. Very nice. Okay, here we go. Helen Renner is one of seven suspects charged with first degree murder and Preston Lord's death. The police report sheds light on the alleged actions the Renner family took in the days after the attack to hide Talon. Now we know those actions are under investigation. According to the police report, Talon's father, Travis Renner, had a longtime girlfriend who was close with the family. She told police after the deadly assault, Talon was taken to the family cabin in Sholo, about three hours away from where they live in Gilbert. She went on to say while Talon was at the cabin, she was messaging with him on Snapchat. Talon sent her a photo of himself walking the family dog, and she told police she could tell by the photo that his jaw was swollen. She submitted that photo to evidence. That ex-girlfriend also told police that in an attorney had advised the runners to let Talon's hands heal before bringing him back to town. So did Queen Creek police know he was taken out of town intentionally? And do those actions warrant any charges in terms of impeding the investigation? We are aware of exactly where he was at through all of our investigation. So that that is not even of question. So we that was part of going through Snapchat and other um, uh, different types of data that helps us locate people. We're still investigating the allegations from that and trying to find evidence that um, what is being alleged is is a crime and whether or not we actually can uh, find enough probable cause and whether we can prove it. So um, too too early to say much more about it than that. One account that comes up several times in the police report from many witnesses is a Snapchat message from Talon Renner where he admits he was drunk, hit Preston, and he died. He goes on to say, quote, I guess I'm just too strong. We saw that over and over again in that report. Yes, we did. And it's horrible to read that over and over again. Um, I just have one more clip to show you. If you stay a little bit, okay, or go, whatever it is, please leave a comment below. Tell me what your questions are so that when I'm going through that entire police report, which I think might take me a while, you know, I thought I'd be getting through I thought I'd be further by now but damn it's just it's a lot of detail and I want to go through it all properly methodically so uh, if you have any questions it might help you know while I'm looking at it it might help me answer it uh, for you if I find those answers for our next episode okay here is another clip that I have for you Jill, the three adults appeared before a judge for hearings earlier today I just wanted to see them appearing in court look at them no, 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 yeah, Stefan. Stefan says, let's see how strong you are in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh my goodness. But he, that guy that breaks so much, the football player, he's in juvenile detention. Which, if they're going to charge him as an adult and try him as an adult, don't you think he should just be with everybody else in jail, right? State prosecutors spoke, saying not only were these individuals involved, they attempted to destroy evidence. The defendant fled from the scene. Um, the defendant was involved in the in the death of Preston Lord. Um, he was also involved in either the destruction or the attempted destruction of evidence and collusion, colluded with others about the potential story. 
As the investigation moves forward, it comes months after the community started calling for action in response to Preston's murder. They've you see, the community was extremely frustrated because it did take a long time to, for the medical examiner to rule Preston's death a homicide. And it took a really long time to arrest all of these people, even though it must take hours to comb through all that evidence and really make sure they've got it all right. I understand things take time. But the community was like, what the hell is going on? Because for a long time, they had felt like, I mean, months would feel like forever to them in the situation, of course. It felt like, well, are we ever going to get justice for Preston? Are we ever going to see arrests? I mean, this was a Halloween party, and they only just got arrested in March, March 6th and 7th, right? Held walks and attended several meetings to make sure their voices were heard. Tonight, they gathered again to honor the teenager's memory. ABC 15's Ashley Paredes is reporting from Queen Creek. We are standing where Preston's life was taken, but we are here to take what his life meant back. Preston Lord's stepmother in tears while speaking to hundreds of people on Thursday, standing united as a community. So you can see the street we were driving up and down. It was right there where Preston, Preston's life was taken. Of course, he died two days later at the hospital, but he was unresponsive. He had a pulse after the CPR and all that, but he wasn't breathing. Shame. Unity. Preston's light will continue to shine through this darkness and bring out the truth. A candlelight vigil held in Preston's honor, following the arrests and indictments over the past 24 hours in connection with his murder. These arrests are only the first steps in getting justice for Preston. Pictures, candles, and balloons placed in the Queen Creek neighborhood where Preston took his last breaths. The vigil organizers say while today is a victory, the fight is not over. We know Preston's memory is here, but we want Preston's memory to be a positive one. He was a good kid, and we want him to be remembered that way. Many of the East Valley parents in attendance are the same ones who have been part of the movement from the beginning, taking part in walks, events, and town meetings. I know it's a long process and this is just the you know beginning of it. Um, myself and my family have been through something like this before too, so we just know the road that's ahead. The thing that I love about this most of all is that it's parents it's the community that came together to, to get the ball rolling. The Gilbert police chief and mayor invited to the vigil and seen holding candles. The Queen Creek police chief also there, speaking with ABC 15 about the recent developments. What I want to say is that it's it was together. Uh, it's the community and my, my investigators that really made this happen. I just want to say thank you to everybody. The community plans to keep the momentum going in hopes of better protecting all children, no matter where they live. We will always carry Preston because he is our story. Um, but once we start moving outside of that, we want to look at things. What can we do even legislatively um, to, to talk about organized bullying? Ashley Paredes, ABC 15. Absolutely. Bullying itself is getting more and more dangerous, right? Worldwide. It's really escalated. And it's really scary to see sometimes that it would be like a social media trend or some, something with a hashtag on TikTok or whatever with teens in groups just, you know, and I'm not saying all, all teens. This is just groups of very lost and confused teenagers, clearly, that are forming these gangs and things like in this, the Gilbert Goon, Goonies. Oh, my goodness. So that is what I have for you today. I will continue to read through that report, which is very long. Um, I will, if I find, what I mean is, just give me some time, okay? I'm going to be working through it. And then if I find anything, any answers to the questions that you can leave for me in the comments or anything else to share with you, I will. I would still like to share with you some interviews, perhaps with the police chief. There were press conferences. There's more text messages. There's all sorts of things, right? It's just about organizing. What are we going to talk about next in this case? Because there is a lot to talk about. And I really hope that uh, the community locally there in Arizona will feel our support because I know you Grizzlies are always very kind and proactive and people do take notice so thank you so so much uh, if you wouldn't mind liking and sharing if you follow me on x my handle is at true crime gizzler then I'll repost as well especially if you tag me too and we just keep the momentum going thank you so much for being here with me today as we study this very sad case together I mean I still I can't imagine it's 16 years old I mean Really, he had his whole life ahead of him. And he's exactly the opposite, by the sounds of it, from any of these teens that attacked him, right? A wonderful person with a bright future. 
and they just for no reason just because i don't know for what just lashing out right attacked him uh rochelle thank you so much you said you're amazing isn't it bringing these incidents to the forefront the families i'm sure are grateful for uh, to you for doing this thank you so much and you know in this case you know i always ask what can we learn from this if you see something say something and keep saying it i guess right because the parents were saying it so it's very frustrating that the police didn't take that seriously until it's too late but they're not giving up they're continuing to raise awareness just about how dangerous these teen gangs can be or any gangs or bullying itself and i uh, that's all we can do right is keep learning from these cases and sharing and showing the family support so kathleen r said what did law enforcement do when they responded to the first 911 call at 906 well, that was 1.5 miles away. So I'm not too sure, actually. But they, they mentioned body cam and all sorts of things. So I don't know. If we can get that or see that, let's do our best. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mods. I will see you all again very soon. Bye.